Welcome back traders to Stat Oasis channel. My name is Ali Casey. Thank you for joining me. Today's video is about genetic algorithm. I'll try to explain to you what is genetic algorithm, how it started and what it's used for. And then we will try to explain it in terms of trading, how it's useful in uh, building strategies. And I'll show you an example how to do it in strategy Quantex. Then if you stick to the end, I'll show you my settings on how to use genetic algorithm. So let's jump in. So what is genetic algorithm? Actually, genetic algorithm, it's a search method that try to emulate the biological process of evolution. It is widely used and very robust and very fast, actually. Now, it is not fast to find every solution, but, but it is fast to find the optimized solution. So genetic algorithm were first introduced in the early 70s, but did not begin to achieve more widespread application, actually, until the 90s, because the computer power uh, were uh, more available and they become faster to use genetic algorithms. So GA, which is short for genetic algorithms, it tries luck and mutation to find the likelihood of the best local optimum. So first step in genetic algorithm is to choose a random initial population uh, group. This group will hold the candidate parameter sets. So in our case, in tradings, it will hold, let's say, RSI and the close and the open and the high and so on and so forth. Out of this uh, parameter set, it will build some initial population. And then it will build and iterate on this population to find the best uh, strategy based on your fitness function. So usually the fitness function is the net profit, let's say. So out of these population uh, parameter sets, it will try to find the best strategy in net profit. And then the third step will be to cross over between the population. So you will take, let's say you have an island here and an island here, and you will cross uh, some strategies from this island two to island one, and from island one to island two, and keep mutating and iterating. So you're always increasing the diversification so you don't get stagnation. And the fourth step is once you reach maturity on those iteration, then you replace some of the parameters inside to see if you can enhance more or if you if you stagnate and that's it. So while uh, GA, they are not guaranteed to find the very best solution or the, in our case, the very best strategy, but they tend to get really good solutions, which is the, in our case again, they tend to find good strategies. The whole point of GA is, is not to go through every single possible solution. That's the whole reason of existence. It's to minimize the number of iteration to find the best solution or something close to the best solution. So if you have, let's say, a moving average, uh, that's uh, this is the only variable, then it doesn't make sense to do a genetic uh, algorithm because the uh, randomness, if you just select uh, like uh, brute force random, then you will find all the solution. You, so you'll say, okay, um, moving close above 10 day moving average, 11 day, 12 day, and you can iterate all of them up to a thousand. It doesn't matter. Like you'll find it really quickly. Genetic algorithm, on the other hand, its use is if you have, let's say, 10 variables, and when you multiply all the possible solution, it will be, let's say, a billion. And you don't want to do a billion to find the uh, best solution or close to the best solution. So you do GA to do it quickly. So by luck and mutations and islands and the full process I described in the beginning, you can find something close to the best solution rather very quickly. So you save a lot of time by doing this. So it's better to reset and mutate from the start rather than brute forcing your way to 10 billion uh, solution to find the best uh, solution. Okay, now that we know how uh, GA can benefit us algo traders to build strategies, let me show you an example on how to do this in Strategy Quant X. But before I do that, let me ask you to smash the like button and hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel if you find value in these videos as this will help the channel grow. 
Now let's jump into SQX. So let's see how SQX uses a genetic uh, algorithm. So if you go to Builder, uh, there is a tab here for genetic algorithm. So if it doesn't show, then you need to go to build mode and instead of random strategies, pick genetic evolution. Click save and then you will see this tab. Once this is on, then everything you build, of course, it's going to be using this uh, genetic option. So first tab here we have in genetic options is the maximum number of generations and the population size. So maximum number of generations can go from 5 to 100. Now 100, it's uh, too much because it's a lot, uh, let's say uh, it's a lot more robust to restart the evolution than keep building generations and you're not uh, reaching your fitness function goal. But the, but the option is available from 5 to 10. And then the population size per island. So this number is linked to the number of islands here. And this number can go from 10 to 100. It's not always best to go the highest because it's, uh, it's better to restart uh, than to go to all uh, evolution possibilities. That's the whole point of genetic uh, algorithm is to find instead of going through billions uh, of iterations it's better to go through uh, some mutations and some luck and you might find it and if you don't just start over so now this number of 50 it will be mul multiplied by 5 so basically we're getting 250 uh, starting number of uh, uh, strategies now the crossover probability and mutation probability, these will add diversification to the strategies. So uh, you can play with these numbers, but basically the more of these you add, the more diverse strategies you will get. So if your strategy has too many variables, then this will be very beneficial. But if your strategy has, let's say two variables, then this will not add as much. So this will depend on the number of variables you have in your strategy. The next tab over is the island options. So island is, uh, so in genetic options here, you will build generations separated by islands. So each island, so let's say island number one will have RSI from 20 to 80, island number two will have a moving average and so on and so forth. And so each island will be developed independently. And think of evolution as, let's say, uh, Homo sapiens uh, born on one island will have a different evolution than another Homo sapiens built uh, born on another island because they don't mix. And you can mix them through this. So you can migrate every generation. In this case, if it's at 50, that means every X generation, which is the 50th generation, you can migrate 20% from one island to another island. And it's like a person born on island two, uh, just ride a boat to island one and marry another person there. So their children uh, will have a different characteristics than both islands. And that's when you get the mix and mutation. So this is actually really helpful, and uh, you can you you should always switch them on to have uh, more mutations between the island. The next tab is the initial population generation. This in the first two tabs it will be randomly generated, and mutation uh, and migration will happen. But if you have a certain strategies that you want to start from, so you can switch this on and it will start, the initial population size will start from there. So this can happen from the data bank. And this is the initial population. And you have, you should have here 250 strategies to start the initial population. The generated decimation coefficient, this will force the number of strategies to, to be more. So let's say you have 250 here to start with. And then if you put the decimation, let's say to three, that means that as it says here, it will create 250 more to have 750 uh, pop initial population size. 
So it will increase the initial number of strategies based on uh, the one day that you have in the data bank, and it will use those as the initial population. And of course, if you switch this off, then it will use the first two. The next step is the filter generated initial population. The initial population uh, should have a goal also. And in this case, the goal is the number of traits should be more than 100. So the initial population, which started here and with mutations over here, anything that doesn't have uh, 100 trades will be filtered out. And of course, you can add more conditions here uh, based on your criteria. And then we come to the fifth tab, which is the fresh blood. And uh, this is really clear, as it says, it's detect same strategies in the population, replace them with newly generated ones. So let's say, imagine you have an RSI strategy, uh, an RSI 2 uh, uh, period, and an RSI 3 period. So these will have a very close uh, performance. And what this will do is it will detect the same strategies and it will replace them. So it will find, okay, RSI 2 and RSI 3 are very close. So let's replace RSI 2 with a new strategy. And this, it will de determine the number of strategies that to, re to be replaced. So this says replace 10% weaker strategies with the newly, newly generated uh, strategies every two generations. So remember here we have, for example, here we have 10 generations. So every two generations will replace the 10% of, so the bottom 10, let's say. So you, we created here a thousand strategies. On the second generation, I will replace the bottom 100 strategies because it's 10%. And then on the fourth generation, I'll do the same. On the sixth generation, I'll do the same and so on and so forth. And then here you can show the last generation data bank or not. And finally, the last tab, we can manage the evolution in it. So we can start again when we finish uh, the continuous repeating evolution. So when everything is done and we didn't reach our goal, we will start again. And we will restart the evolution from the start if the in sample, in this case, it's whole because you have the training and the validation. So if you have the whole in sample, stagnates for five generations. So let's say your goal is to be, again, the net profit. And if the initial population size stagnates after five generations, you're not reaching your goal, then it will restart everything from scratch. And that's it. That's the whole uh, genetic options. And uh, genetic option builder uh, in a strategic context is really detailed. And each platform will have uh, different options. And I can tell you from TradeStation, they don't have as many options. Uh, they are actually really limited. So really the uh, application in uh, strategy context is, uh, I would say very detailed and you can really customize it to your own. Which brings me to how I use it. The whole purpose of genetic uh, evolution builder in, uh, in trading in, uh, in general is to limit the number of iterations to find the best solution. So like I said, you can use the brute force, which in our case, we can uh, go back here, what to build. And we will say random generation. Random generation is a, just a brute force of finding uh, the optimum, the optimal solution. But genetic evolution, it's uh, the best way to decrease the time to find the best solution. So like I said, if you have more variables in your strategy, then, and let's say if you multiply, you know, let's say an RSI and a close and open and an ADX and uh, the stop loss. And if you multiply all the possible parameters, then you'll come up, let's say, with a billion solution, a billion possible solution. So you don't want to brute force through that. So then genetic algorithm is the best way to find it. Again, it, it's not guaranteed to find the best solution, but it is highly likely that it will, it will find something really close to the best solution. So coming from that point of view, that the genetic 
option tab in SQX, the whole point of it is to minimize the time that you need to find a good strategy. Then I would say you should really, even going with the default options, it's really good. And that's what I do. <laughs> uh, because really, it's, uh, it is not meant to find the best strategy. It's just meant to find the best seed to find the best strategy. And I would much rather find, spend my time in robustness testing to find the best way to find a robust method than in the strategy in the beginning. Now, that doesn't mean it's not uh, beneficial. No, it's really good. And it will weed out some really crappy strategies. But really, the, uh, the default here is really excellent. And I uh, rarely find myself going coming back here to change. I sometimes add an option here uh, to make it, uh, let's say, uh, more stringent or, or a little bit looser. Excellent. You made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please, if you find the content useful, helpful, uh, providing value to you, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and hit the like button, as that is a vote for me and for Google that I'm producing a valuable content to you. As always, good luck with your trading, good luck with your investing, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.